Hey everybody, Alfred Lisi coming to you from a place called the Choo Choo Barn, which is a really unique place. It's not a scale model railroad. It's high rail, it's old school Lionel, but they've got some of the best animation I've ever seen. And since we all have model railroads, and a lot of us got started with Lionel and a lot of the older three rail stuff, uh, not only do I find it very romantic and a change of pace, but it is definitely worth seeing this. This is in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, near the Strasburg Railroad and the Pennsylvania uh, Railroad Museum. And I highly recommend you stop and check this place out. Let's go inside and I'll show it to you. Well, folks, when you first walk in here, it's pretty big. It's probably every bit of 60 by 60 feet. And I'm just going to do a quick walk around and then we're going to hone in on the many many different animation scenes that are just incredible so let me give you a quick walk you could spend all day here it's really an incredible even though it's not exact scale it, it is an incredible thing to see because it's similar to Roadside America, which no longer exists. And there are many incredible animations. A lot of the modeling is Pennsylvania Dutch country. Uh, like this big white complex we're coming up on is part of Pennsylvania Dutch country. I used to take the kids there, my wife and I, I forget the name of the place. What a great park it was. It is. And it's modeled here. We'll come back to it in just a moment. All right, let me go ahead and I could spend all day filming. As a matter of fact, here's a parade, which is one of the automated features, which I just caught by mistake here. I just think it's cool. Every tent has uh, circus animation. Here's some more circus animation in one of the circus tents. You gotta really stare at stuff for a long period of time because stuff that you think isn't moving after a minute or two starts moving. The little elephant moves, all the elephants move. The rhinos move too, it's just you have to wait for it. Got automated circus parades. I mean, this stuff comes out of nowhere. More animation. There's more circus animation. They've got actual running water that's recycled, that's running. You know, folks, as I was walking by, I heard a bunch of cars revving. And I looked down, and there are a bunch of hot rods in the middle of the road, ready to race. And this thing must have a sensor in it, because when I walked by, it set off a speaker that I didn't see. And it, it's absolutely amazing. And it's just super, super cool. The cars rev their motors and are ready to race. Folks, can let me move and see if I can trigger the revving of the uh, muscle cars because it's on a motion switch. And these are one. All right, let me see if I can walk by. Man, that is cool. Layout goes through being lit up and dimmed, being lit up and dimmed, which is pretty cool. 
this big white complex here that I was at a loss for what the name was. This is Dutch Wonderland, and it was a it's a park, and everything inside that park runs. That's a log ride for the for kids, and there's a lot of rides inside Dutch Wonderland that actually are automated, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the video. Virtually all the cars are lit up with headlights. We've got uh, maintenance screws all over the layout, so virtually all the cars are lit up. We've got some beautiful scenes that are well modeled here, folks, that uh, are O scale, high rail scale, but they're, again, these are places in Pennsylvania Dutch country here in Strasbourg, and uh, every, every time I look, I see something different going on. There's the Dutch Haven. Or, yeah, Dutch Haven, it's a place here. See the traffic, you've got, I uh, just saw a Corvette go up the road there. Cars everywhere driving up and down the road. That's a superb model. Look at a Mustang, look at that. Fastback. It's like a Caprice. Yes, this is the Willows Lodge here. There's a wedding. Now the lights have come on. I can see what's going on. That's a beautiful scratch-built uh, O-scale structured at scale. Many of the buildings here are to scale. Operating cranes. Get a close-up of some of the traffic. I like it, it's pretty interesting. Kind of a cool thing to think about trying to do on your model railroad. Instead of powering the car, just put them on rollers. And from a distance, it looks like the cars are, are driving. You can't tell that it's actually tracks on the road. Simple but effective. There goes a, a Fox Body Mustang. It's the opposite angle of this uh, Shoe fly ply, they sell shoe fly pies and all kinds of Pennsylvania Dutch treats inside the Dutch Haven. Guess the prototype is close by, I would imagine. We'll have to ask Gary. Gary's our host here. I'll introduce you to. Actually, Gary is not here. Um, one of the fellows here that runs the layout and uh, just showed up, and we'll talk to him shortly. Well, folks, uh, Chase is going to be uh, our host. Uh, he's a fellow that runs the layout here today and maintains the trains. He tells me, sadly, this building is no longer uh, in town. They tore it down and put a theater up in place of this beautiful building. But the Dutch Haven is still here, thank goodness. That's really an iconic structure. I remember that as a little kid. It's a house being built. A lot of high rail trains are running through this and I'm concentrating this video more on the animation and the scenes than watching the high rail trains. Uh, just many, many, many different trains are just, high rail trains are just coming. But again, I'm concentrating this video a little bit more on the scenes and a little bit more on the animations. This is an interesting shot. It's probably 40 feet from where I'm standing to the end here. Well, I wish my wife was here today. She would really love this train town zoo. And uh, it's an O-scale zoo, but let me zoom in and show you the animation, the animation in this zoo. These animals are moving around. And if you stay here long enough, virtually everything moves, whether it be the elephants, the giraffes, the rhinos. I just think it's pretty cool. Got some stuff going on back there. Interesting scene, big zoo.
Got a dedicated trolley line. We've got an HO scale train running around the zoo, which is absolutely perfect for perspective since these are O scale figures in the HO scale train. Makes it look like one of the smaller amusement park trains that you would expect to see. It goes Western Maryland. In, a, uh, in an amusement park. I think it's pretty clever. Got a big facility here. Cows do go in and out of this facility. Pretty interesting. Pretty slow moving the cows. Got a local turkey hill that the gas prices actually change every day to the correct price. Pretty cool. I remember seeing this baseball field when I came here long, long ago. And yes, the players are moving, trying to steal bases. Pretty cool scene. You can actually hear the band playing in the gazebo, which I think is really cool. Another night view of the layout on the opposite side. Here's a view of the trolley stations. A nicely done, well detailed uh, trolley station. It's a sky roof scene and looking down inside one of the industrial buildings. I think it really is interesting to be able to look down and see all the machinery and everything going on on the inside of this large repair shed. They've got multiple accident scenes going on. That's a, it looks like a 69 pace car Camaro that hit a telephone pole. It's backed up traffic. kid flying an RC airplane, man. Yeah. It's cool. Almost missed that walking by the scene. It's a model of the Caboose Inn. I don't remember what it's called. I don't know whether it's called the Caboose Inn. I'll ask uh, Chase. Uh, I stayed there once when I was a teenager. You can spend the night in a caboose. And I had breakfast in that place. And my parents bought me my first Lionel train. It was a 671 turbine steam locomotive from Lionel. It's a well done stained glass window on that church. Very well done stained glass. A lot of the lodges have working chimneys. Here's one with multiple fireplaces going inside it with the smoke coming out. Very interesting the way they did this. I'm just realizing that this house is on fire. That's not a good thing. Interesting animation there. Just saw a bunch of Amish dudes working on the roof on this house in the distance. And they're all, wow, they're working down in the yard. Look at this. They're working in the yard. And they're working on the roof. Really well done. There's an establishment, it may or may not still be in business, but it was well modeled, and uh, next to it is a used car lot. Oh, that's really cool, man. They have got... Okay. 
this looks, looks like a fastback uh, Mustang on the lot for sale there. Here's a side view of that church. It's very impressive in person, especially the stained glass windows. Had another parade. There are parades everywhere. If you're not careful, you'll walk right by a parade. There's another garage, very well modeled, gas station garage. Got a circus train here, just pulled up. Interesting trolley car and a caboose. Here's another view of the parade. I don't know who's in the car. It's like an old Buick, I can't tell. Very realistic giraffes. Well, everybody, uh, my host today is Chase. And Chase, what was your last name? I didn't get your last name. Uh, Brickman. Brickman. And you are involved in TCA, too, aren't you? Yes, I am. And tell, I was kind of, wow, tell me what you do for TCA. Uh, well, besides being a member, I'm also the uh, current sitting chairman of the National Toy Train Museum down the street. Yes. But when I'm not there, I'm, I'm here or over at the railroad. Wow. So, but... Um, yeah, it's fun, you know, very train-filled <laughs> lifestyle. Uh, there's not a single day I don't wake up and uh, and, and uh, don't dread coming to work. So, right. But this isn't work. This is fun. So. Right. Wow. Well, this is the back, the uh, secret back control room. What and, What is all this? Explain what we got yeah, here. So, uh, under the stairs here, um, these two drums are kind of the main, well, I don't want to call it a computer, but the brains behind... Uh, the more complicated animations that happen out there. This top drum, uh -huh. which is currently not spinning, it's going to start up in a second. That is the the sequence drum behind the fire scene. Okay. Each one of these switches down here uh, controls a different element. So, for instance, starting with switch three, mm -hmm. switch three controls the actual fire truck. Switch four turns on the uh, little flickering uh, light bulbs that simulate fire. Mm -hmm. Five and six is the smoke, seven is the siren, eight's the doors, wow. nine and ten are the little figurines, and eleven's the water. And then twelve or thirteen are hooked up to other parts of the, uh, uh, lit, the uh, layout for other, um, other functions. And then there's another one below it. Yes. Now, this one is what controls the daytime, nighttime cycle. Now, there is... 45 individual switches attached these little brass wires okay and this doesn't really have a sequence it starts with one and goes all the way down you can follow the line here mm -hmm. and all that's doing is turning on and off different circuits most of them are lights we don't have any uh, nighttime specific animations or anything right and this drum's doing two things simultaneously it's tr it's uh, triggering the light circuits it's also turning the dimmer for the light. Wow. And this was all done in the 70s? Yes. So. Old school. Yep. And then, actually, if you swivel the camera over here, we go from old school to very new school. This is a PLC. Okay. Or a programmable logic controller. This is what runs the Stroudsburg Railroad. Oh, I didn't know that. Now, this is quite new. We only actually installed this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, originally, the Stroudsburg Railroad ran on a very similar system to the uh, drums. Which are um, the real railroad? No, the, oh, the, the Stroudsburg Railroad out on the layout. Okay, oh, on the layout, okay. And what 
Um, we originally had a, uh, a box full of relays and old analog timers, mm -hmm. and that worked for many, many years. And, um, and sadly, as things age, it became less and less reliable. Right. And uh, Tom was an amazing man. He's the he built all this, and he was truly one of a kind. Now, what was his name, Tom? Um, Tom Groff. And is he still alive? No, unfortunately, he is no longer with us. Oh. But he's the one who built. I'm going to say pretty much everything you see out on the layout and back here. Wow. So, but yeah, he was an amazing uh, electrician and he made some truly, truly complex, you know, constructs that, you know, were very simple. Right. Uh, so simple, in fact, that most people have trouble understanding how they work. So, and hence, hence why we had to re uh, sadly replace what, uh, what he had with something a bit more modern. And, and I've been coming, I mean, I came down here in 1977, and a lot of these animations, the ballpark, for example, yep. it still runs. Yep. And this, it not only does it run, but it runs an average of how many days, how many hours? Oh, seven days a week. I see, we're open from five to ten every day, so thousands of hours. Just think, folks, I mean, think about it. Seven days a week, hours and hours and hours, and these animations that I just spent showing you all are running. And you might, you know, one might say, wow, what an archaic thing, but guess what? It works. Yeah, and actually, I, since we were coming, I, I dug out from cold storage some of the animations that we no longer have on the layout or that Tom built from, uh, for other shows. Oh, wow, okay. And what ama what, what's amazing is a lot of these uh, actually still work after all these years. So let's see if we can coax. But you, you pulled them off the layout? Uh, so some of these uh, were on the layout. Some of these uh, he built for friends. Some he built for uh, just to take the shows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a Ferris wheel. Wow. And then over here we have a uh, sawmill. Uh huh. And all of these run off of 120 volts. So you, what you plug, you know, you know, a lamp into or, you know, your household appliances. Right. Right. Wow. So these are, are more along the lines of what you would have saw back in the 70s. Uh, a long, long time ago. Very simple, and they all run off of these wonderful motors. They're called Synchron motors. These are clock motors. Those are clock motors? And these things run for hours and hours and hours and wow. hours. And they are very, very reliable. Are they DC or AC? They are, these are AC. These are 120 volts AC. Wow. And that runs most of the uh, most animations. Of the, most of the animations. Got a sweep, a street sweeper. Yep. Good Lord. Let's go into the control panel real quick. Most yep. people never see this. Yep. So, uh, actually, it, uh, it's, it's easier if you step up there and I'll just stand behind you. All right. Let me kind of... This is not DCC control, so we're overlooking this enormous layout up here. So, everything up here is analog. Man, alive. This looks like the control board of a, you know, a rock and roll show, like a Pink Floyd concert or something. Man! Yeah, so every single animation is on a separate circuit. Okay. So that means for every animation there is a uh, corresponding switch. And the reason we don't have one big master switch is if, if something were to go wrong, mm -hmm. it's easier just to turn it off and deal with it after hours. Right. So, um... And everything's organized, everything's labeled. So everything you see, so the top switches are turned on and off the circuits for the trains. Mm -hmm. And then over here uh, with the red dots, that's all the water pumps and everything else is just for the animations. Okay. Uh, the different caps, those are just uh, reminders. Oh. Uh, blue means it's a spare, that, so that circuit is currently not being used for anything. Okay. And red is something that we need to uh, address later. So as you can see right now, the sky right over it, Dutch Wonderland is turned right. off and, and marked. And look at this, folks. I was talking about the, uh, the zoo. I saw a bunch of switches for the heads. Here we go. You've got elephant head moving. You've got a bunch of animal head switches. Where did they go? I saw a whole bunch of them. Oh, elephant head, giraffe head. Everything is broken down on its own circuit, you said. Yep. Stubborn donkey. Oh, yeah. Sword swallower. There's a lot of stuff I didn't notice. Oh, yeah, no. That uh, is up here. Now, where do the trains get controlled? Over on the other side? So, two places, actually. So, these switches here and over here. So okay. what you see here, these are polarity controls. Okay. So every now and then something happens where a train runs past its stop section or gets stuck 
-hmm. So we can reverse the direction with these switches. And wow. then th this is what we actually use to control the speed. And this is what blows a lot of people away because people think we have ZWs or something else. Um, th that really wouldn't work too well for us. Right. We actually run our trains on DC okay. instead of, instead of uh, AC like most O-gauge trains. And okay. that way we can get a little, little bit more finer control out of them. And also so we have no e to deal with. Wow. So to reverse the train, all we have to do is reverse the polarity. But yeah, so we got a simple a volt and amp meter fuse, which you know blow occasionally, and just a nice old fashioned um, rheostat. Rheostat. Wow. And then you can see the different types. So we have passenger siding, freight siding, double main, which is where the Amtrak runs. Uh -huh. Trolley. So. We yeah, only have one trolley track, but it's broken up into two sections. So we have the zoo end and the circus end. Uh -huh. Monorail, double highway, which is uh, over by the mountain. Uh -huh. And then we have the Strasburg Railroad, the HO at Dutch Wonderland, the Dog Bone Circuit, circuit, and over by the park. Man, this is amazing. <laughs> this is, this is crazy. Yeah. This is. And then over on this shelf here is all the sound equipment. Okay. Now, this is also something we updated this year. These are uh, MP3 players, at amp combos. Mm -hmm. And each one is a different um, sound you're hearing. So we got the drag strip, the blacksmith, baseball field, circus, band, uh, the, the barn raising. Right. Damn. Well, Chase, I really appreciate you showing us this. This and folks, I mean, I could we could spend I could spend eight hours making a video on this. So, any of you that hey, why didn't you film more trains? Well, maybe another day, or we'll come back and talk more about the trains. But I just wanted to give a little taste of the animation and just the behind the scenes. I really appreciate it. Thanks so hey, much. No problem. Thank you for coming.